Do you want to upgrade your Famicom from its stock RF output signal to outputting a much cleaner analog video signal? Possibly. And would you like to keep the original aesthetics without drilling into the shell of your Famicom? Of course you would. So sit back, relax, and grab some snacks because we have a Famicom mod for you today. Hello. Family now that might not be the Famicom from your generation. This was the Japanese version of the NES, albeit quite a yellowed version at that. In today's episode, we're going to upgrade its RF signal to an AV signal without cutting or any drilling into the console. So let's take a look. RF versus AV. R2, can you roll the clip? Aha, there it is. Looking kind of like I remember it. Notice there's a lot of distortion. Now let's take a look at the analog video. As you can see there, it looks quite a bit cleaner. Definitely doesn't have those wavy distortion lines. Can you tell which is RF and which is audio video? Did you get it right? Give yourself a pat on the back. Thanks, R2. All right, so let's get into this. You need yourself a Famicom and a nice workspace. First, dissemble. You need a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of gloves. Take out the six Phillips screws from the base. Take off the top. Carefully pull out the holders for the controllers, which are permanently wired into the machine and carefully unwrap them from the posts. All right, there is the motherboard, six screws for that as well. Let's take her out carefully. And the ejector lever with the spring. Now, to completely free it, we need to take out the on-off switch. And she is free at last, free at last. Now, let's take her into the shop, take a comparison to a previously modded board Thank you, R2. And the mod we're going to do today. So here's the previous one. It has a 47 microfarads and 220 microfarad capacitors, along with a 120 ohm resistor and a 1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. Audio out right there. The video out is here, and the ground is right there. This is the old RF output, which we're going to keep intact. So we'll be able to do AV video and RF. Here is the TRRS jack male and female plug. We're gonna install this on our mod today. TRRS jack, there are four channels. Two for audio, one for video, and one for ground. You're gonna need to choose your wires. So today we're gonna go with a ribbon cable. It keeps the wires nice and close together, very short. So we're gonna strip and tin our cable. And the other end, strip, flux, and tin. Also, it's good to separate the wires just a little bit so it fits better. You want to stick these into the little tiny holes on the TRRS jack, so you've got to do a little bit of finagling with the wires, bending them out just slightly. You just have to have a little patience. One thing you have to do to get a pseudo stereo sound is to connect the two audio poles together. So I'm going to use a leg of a capacitor here and connect it from one pole of the audio to the other pole. So you get left and right sound. So it's not real stereo, it's just duplicated sound out of both channels. And a uh, snip up. So let's just trim them so that it fits together well. And also clip down the holder so that the wires don't pull out if you yank on the cord. That's snug. There it goes. Very nice. Nice and snug. All right, we got our TRS jack soldered up. Now let's take a closer look at the board and install our components in this area. So first let's prep the board, flux it, and add some new solder to the joints so they're nice and wet, easy to work with. Get your 47 microfarad capacitor, 
I think as long as they're over 16 volts, um, they'll work just fine. You don't want to go probably not much lower than 16 volts. So just make sure it's flush with the board and then solder it up. And then take your 220 microfarad capacitor and then solder it up. Ceramic capacitor, resistor, ceramic capacitor should go onto the negative leg of the 220 microfarad. And the 120 ohm resistor should go onto the negative leg of the 47 microfarad. So let's just clean this up, clip all the extra bits of leg that we don't need off, straighten up the wires, uh, straighten up the legs so that it's easy to connect the wires, and just cleaning up this area in general. Sorry it's difficult to see, my hands are in the way, but we'll get a shot of it here. Alright, so now just go back and get your TRS jack that you wired up, clip the wires to the right shape. See how I've shortened the ground and just solder it up. There's the audio, there's the ground, and the last one we got here is the video. You must be very proud. So if that was too fast for you, you can go back and pause it where you need to. Now she's all soldered up, let's try it out with AV cables. Snap her together, give her some power, and gain and juice we have it looking good it's connected to my sony pvm looks very nice i suggest you all use a crt television if you're using one of these so let's check the rf output on a newer television the rf signal looks like that and i flip it over to the video signal here yes definitely much better so both signals work on this boy what do you think about that Ben that's good news looks like it's a winner now we just need to snap it back together so return the shielding on the power supply area put the spring back in the top half connecting it with the ejector rod insert it into the top button there so that it moves freely up and down the reset button it just goes back in there. Make sure you orientate the little part with that had the sticker on it down. So when you turn it on, it shows. All right, and put our switch back in. There's just two Phillips screws for the switch. Once you get those in, now we're just gonna slip back in the remote controller ports, player two. In player one, after you got the controllers back in, just route the wires carefully down where it holds the controller lines nice and snug. They should wrap around the posts here one time, then add the gray, I don't know what you call it, runner. Keeps It holds the controller in tight. On the second controller side is where you're gonna have your routed wire. And this is where we're gonna keep from having to drill or make holes into our Famicom. We're just going to run the cable right through there and it's a small enough, the ribbon wire is small enough where we don't have to worry about it. It's pretty snug but it's not going to cause any issues for us. Just push it down a little bit, keep it out of the way and you don't have to use any hot glue or anything because the wire is just long enough. Just make sure it's in there nice and tight. It's not going to move anywhere. I mean you could add um shrink tubing but I think this is gonna be okay no shorts are gonna occur with this all right so let's just put our board back in the six screws one two three four five six and now the six Phillips screws for the top half one two three four five six slightly bend the cover over the cartridge area in order to get it back into place all the buttons work there she is looking very clean now you can play your games either in audio video or in its original form of RF. Please uh, write down in the comments if this helped you out in your mod or what do you think of this mod? Do you think it's better to do it this way or is it better to drill holes into your Famicom? If you want to see more modding, click the video on the right. If you want to see something YouTube wants you to see, click on the left. Thank you all for watching. 
This is Scruffy Looking signing off. Who's Scruffy Looking?